It's Acoustic Week again. Join us today as we examine all the acoustic guitar adjustments, and we're going to give some recommendations on how to get your acoustic to play great. So stay tuned. <laughs> Hello, welcome friends to episode 163 of the Play Guitar Podcast. I'm Lee, and this is the podcast that's determined to make you a better guitar player. No matter if you're just starting out or you've been playing for years, this is the show that will help you become the guitarist that you always wanted to be. Like Scott, that's who I always wanted to be. Whoa. If you're new here, make sure that you subscribe to the podcast and check out the description for all of the links from the show. Well, folks, today is all about acoustic guitar adjustments let's see here let's bring this up here like just what that fancy graphic says right there we're, we're going to be learning um, all the things that we can do with our acoustic guitar to make it play better and all the things that we might want to get some help with where's that line where is it this something that i could spend a little bit of time and learn or is this something that uh, it's worth spending a few dollars so that, uh, I, you know, you may not get the learning experience from it, but you may, <laughs> you may get the, uh, you know, not, not have a ruined guitar and then a really big bill after that. Mm -hmm. And I, <laughs> I'd like to introduce my co-host for Acoustic Week, Scott Pallet. Scooter's here with us. How you doing, Scooter? Doing very well here in Macon, Georgia. And, uh. Looks like everything's going well down there in Orlando. <laughs> it is hot and humid today. Can you believe that? Hot and humid? Well, it's a little, uh, looks a little damp out and chilly, not cold. Mm. Yeah, yeah. We That's how it's been here for a while. Um, but today it went back to, oh, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> The heat shower when you walk out the door. I remember that, that those things there. So, so Scooter is. Uh, I've known Scooter since, um, uh, you know, since the, uh, the the big TV days, the the uh, huge enormous cell phone days. You know the, the you know back in the day, and when uh, you know everybody knows I'm I play pretty much lead electric guitar. Uh, and when I needed to go in and uh, actually look like I knew what I was doing playing acoustic guitar, this is the man I went to right here. And uh, I'm so fortunate to have him here today so he can psh, keep me on the right path, right? <laughs> so as we go through these things, the the um, when you start with electric guitar, that switch over to acoustic, you're like, what? I can't set the intonation? I can't do, you know, there's, there's, there's a lot of things that are a little bit more involved and we're going to work our way through. We have, I've got a plan for this. So we're going to start with easier adjustments and then we're going to start with the things that are a little bit more involved that you still might want to tackle, but it may take you a little bit of uh, reading up on what you're doing and watching some videos, those kind of things. And then in the last section, we'll talk about some really advanced things uh that you can do to adjust your guitar to make it play better uh and that is where you may be making a decision uh, it might be worth it to spend a little put a, get somebody who knows what they're doing to do that uh, especially on your your uh number one guitar there as well what's your number one guitar there scooter this is a a, a larave that i've had for years and i had it made uh I think in 1999, it was a custom because this particular larvae uh, is a steel string, but it has a two inch nut at this end. I learned how to play the guitar on a classical, which is a two inch nut and a real wide, wide mm -hmm. neck. And uh, I still have necks that are an inch and three quarter acoustics and an inch and seven eighths, like a 12 string neck, uh, different size necks for different type of picking and uh, but this is my number one go-to so to speak and i'm just using it for uh things that we'll be talking about to look at how much of this guitar needed to be adjusted right off <clears throat> right off the bat did, was it a was it a project or did it come pretty much the way you liked it 
I know the answer uh, to this. <laughs> that, that's, a, that's a, a funny story. Uh, I ordered this with much thought about the guitar I wanted. If I was stranded away from everything, this is the only guitar I would have. So I wanted it to be built exactly like I wanted. So to make a long story short, I, I, I didn't want a lot of a lot of stuff on it. I was playing children's music at that time. And uh, so I thought a nice headstock. This is a joker. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. But I have dogs barking. Uh, <laughs> That's okay. Dogs. We're dog friendly. Every time I show this guitar, they bark. I don't know. What <laughs> and so uh, anyway, it's a Larave. And I was a Larave dealer at Backbeat Music. And uh, John Larrave, I, I heard, I don't know if this is true or not, but John Larrave would always touch a guitar in the building process if you put in a neck extension uh, of this abalone around the edge. If it mm -hmm. went down here and down here, he was the one that did that. Okay. And that doesn't mean he didn't touch any other part of it, but I knew Somebody told me, I didn't know this, but somebody told me if I had, if I ordered that, John Larrave would lay hands on my guitar. So ironically, uh, when it came in, the day it came in, I opened it up, I opened the case and I looked at it and it didn't have the extensions. Right. And uh, Keith said to me, oh man, it, it doesn't have those things you ordered uh, on it. So. I picked it up out of the case. I started to play it. And I said, I don't care. <laughs> this is this everything is I've ever done and, and how it plays uh, everything. And so I ended up not. <laughs> That's how this guitar ended up. Awesome. Awesome. OK, so we're, we're going to go ahead and get to the adjustments here. So let's take a look here. Our first one, we're starting with easy adjustments. And the first thing that you can do to your acoustic guitar to make it play differently, actually make it play worse if you want to, or, or make it play better, is change your strings, change the gauge of your strings. Uh, I tend to do a lot of bending of strings so I fall on the opposite side of string gauges than Scott does. I use lighter strings, 11s. Um, don't know what the low string is, but it's, you know, it's, 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 uh, it's, it's easier to bend strings a little bit and it's, uh, it doesn't fight you so much, I, but it doesn't get that, you know, really, really strong, uh, thwack when you pull a, an open open string, you know, so there's some sacrifices that I'm, I'm making. What, what are string gauges are you using right now, Scott? Well, uh, I actually use, uh, 11s, not on this guitar. I use 12s on this mm -hmm. particular guitar. And then, uh, on a guitar where I tune the entire guitar down a step, I, I may use even 13s, okay. uh, but generally 12s. And then on a, on a finger picking guitar, I like to use 11s, uh, and they bend a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And then I have a very small, which I call my high string guitar, and I tune it up two, two steps, mm -hmm. and I use 10s on, on it. Nice. So, so and, and there's so many things, like just this simply changing the strings, like on a big guitar, on a normal size guitar, or even a smaller guitar, if you use 11s, there, it doesn't sound like there's a big difference in numbers from 11s to 12s, but there is a big feeling. And right. the way the guitar, the way the, the strength of the string or the, the gauge of the string pulls on the neck and causes the neck uh, to reposition from 11s to 12s or 10s or 13s or, or whatever. Okay, so... When you say tens on an acoustic guitar, I start to smile a little bit. <laughs> that sounds like fun to me. I could really, really do something with it. But, but, it, but anyway. So changing your strings is the first thing that you can do. Um, if you don't know how to change your strings, um, I would suggest you take a little bit of time. Uh, I've I've done podcasts on changing strings before. 
uh, take a look back. I don't know which one it is. There's too many of them right now to, to remember them. Uh, but um, it's the it's it's the, you know the first step into really owning your instrument, really getting it to play exactly the way you want to. It's it's the it's the um, it's the gateway drug, I would say, being able to change your own strings and the way the strings are wrapped. We talked about in that podcast uh, different ways of wrapping around the tuning pegs. Um, and, you know, as far as slipping and all of those kind of things. Um, so, so that would be the first thing is changing strings, finding ones that, um, don't fight you as, as much, not being afraid to go smaller at first. And, and, and then you can build up to heavier strings. Um, but, but we're going to move on from there that our next thing we're going to talk about is truss rod adjustments. Okay. Truss rod adjustments. What's the truss rod? Scooter, tell everybody what the truss rod is. Well, a truss rod is is embedded, and it's underneath the fretboard. There's a slot that the truss rod fits in, and it adds more stability to the neck, and it also adds the ability to increase relief or take you know change the the plane of the of the fretboard of the guitar by tightening it up or by loosening it up, you adjust the pitch of the neck and, and how much relief you might have and how much relief you take away. And for those electric guitar players that are tuned in, because I know a lot of, I'd say most of your viewers are probably electric players, uh, I did all the setups and stuff when we had to store on electrics as well as acoustics, as long as they were uh, fairly easy setups. And with electrics, they're very easy to set up because they have a, a bunch of, of adjustment ability, more so than even an acoustic. But they both have the truss rod, which is a, a main thing. And so uh, this will greatly give you the ability to play easier and, and with just a turn, a slight turn of the truss rod. But it's not something that you really want to just grab your wrench and start you don't want to do that. Is is this something that I could ruin my guitar by messing around with the truss rod? That's what I hear all the time. I'm scared to, to to get the Allen wrench out and start turning that because I'm going to break my guitar. Have you ever seen a guitar you, broken from a truss rod? Um, yes. Um, okay. If you if you uh, if you not broken, but I mean you're going to have to have it fixed. <laughs> If you if you loosen your truss rod too much and where it's held in place, the nut comes off that adjustment mm -hmm. uh, uh, thread, then there's no more adjusting that neck. Right. You have to take the fretboard off and reconnect the truss rod. Again, if you tighten a truss rod too much, and I've never seen this happen, but I'm sure it could, if you keep tightening it, what you're doing is you're taking the relief out, and, and let's say your neck is like this when it's sitting on the bench. As you tighten it, your neck gets flatter and flatter and flatter, and then it then starts to Back reverse and go up like this. And I'm guessing you, if you if you get on that wrench, you could bring it. So, what what uh, let's talk about a, a real quick way of straightening the neck. That's kind of what we we want to do. We want to get the neck flatter not completely flat um because if you've ever seen the way the string vibrates it's it goes in the center of of the string here let me i'm gonna switch cameras real quick here uh just one second so in the center of the string it, it moves more okay so where you would be in the center of your string um, you're going to want to have a little bit of what they call relief to give a little bit of extra room for that string to to uh, to move. Now, what you happen to have, which is really nice to find out how straight your neck is, is you have a nice tight string here, which will give you a flat plane. Uh, so the trick is to see how straight or curved either back bow or forward your neck is is you can take you can actually take a capo put it at the first fret or just use your first finger like i'm doing and then use your other finger um, at the 15th fret on the string then you can look down and see how far away the string is from the frets in the middle of the fretboard and that should tell you how 
much um, how straight your neck is. That takes the nut out of the picture and the bridge out of the picture. And what happens is um, when you can do that you, with your thumb, even if you have a capo with your thumb, you can push down on the string a little bit to see how much how much room you have for there. What they say is that you should have a business card size gap in between that that gives the string enough uh, curvature to to move. Uh, it's that's a quick and dirty way of figuring out how straight your neck is without having to buy a bunch of stuff. I, on the other hand, like to go down to uh, Office Depot, any of those things, and get these drafting uh, drafting rulers. And uh, on one side, it's perfectly straight there, so you can actually see the tops of the frets, how straight they are, as if, if there's a curve underneath. And then here, I've scalloped out where the frets would be. This side can rest straight on the fretboard around the strings. And you can also see how straight or narrow or, or how curved or straight your neck is as well. This costs like, I don't know, five bucks, <laughs> some marker to make it easier to see. And then I just took a file, filed out where all the, the frets would be. It's perfectly straight, it's great, easy tip for someone who wants to start getting their guitar necks right where they want to be. The um, If you've got too much curve, a lot, especially for acoustic guitar, a lot of people, they pick up an acoustic guitar and they have this enormously high action and they just automatically assume that the bridge needs to be adjusted. But it could be your neck is so curved forward that it's pulling the strings away from the... We're going to talk about action. That's what what we're dealing with here. How, what kind of action a player likes? How high away from the frets do they like their strings to be? Okay, so that's, that's one is, oh, sorry, go ahead. You're, you're, you're really doing very well. I'm learning so much. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I bought my, the same tool you have there for $5. If you mm. go to Stumat, you can buy that tool for like a uh, hundred dollars. <laughs> right. And, uh, <laughs> It does the exact same thing, but it came from Stumac. <laughs> and I like to buy multiples. So I have a different, for different scale guitars. So here's my Gibson scale for, for where I cut the, the frets out there. And then this is for a longer, this is my Fender scale. So, I, you know, 10 bucks, right? <laughs> S saved you a lot of time. I've learned so much because I've, I've spent way too much money on the tools that I have. But I found that, speaking of Gibson, it's one of the phenomenal guitars uh, that I work on. You know, they say that every guitar needs a bit of relief for the reasons you gave earlier, mm -hmm. for the string to rotate and stuff. And Gibson's Les Pauls, they're, they're amazing. I have actually set some up that there was no relief. They were flat, yeah, perfectly and they flat. played fabulously. I mean, yeah, against the rules, and because the action is so so easy to play, um, you actually play lighter. It's it's yes. it's, it's people with a heavy. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. People with a heavy attack, those perfectly yeah. flat necks, they tend to buzz a lot. But you know, strings buzzing because they're close to the frets is not actually always a bad thing. Um, if you listen to flamenco guitarists, that's intentional. That That's part of the tone. When they really smack a, a, a string, especially a low string, um, a little bit of that buzz gives the guitar the sound that they're looking for. So that, that's something that's actually in, you can in, use to your advantage as well. I keep my low string a little bit. If you guys have ever noticed when I'm doing uh, just scales and stuff like that on the low string, I get a lot more buzz on the low string. Uh, just because I'm not paying attention, I'm I'm picking it too hard. But um, usually when I'm playing out, uh, I have a, a little bit lighter touch because I have a loud amplifier and, and I don't have to to play as loud. But but so um, you know, getting your strings like so super high that it's they're it's completely clean without any fretboard buzz. Uh, 
is is not always desirable. You want you you know that it's part of the guitar. All these little sounds of the guitar make it the wonderful instrument that it is. So so that's another thing too. You don't crank your your action up so high that it's hard to play just to get rid of tons of that fret fretboard buzz. Yeah, if you're getting a buzz on an open string, that's one thing. If you're getting a buzz or or if you're fretting out when you fret, that's enough. That's a that's, thing where you have a problem as well. Right. But a buzz, people bring me guitars to set up all the time, and they'll say, "Oh man, it's got a it buzzes. I get a fret buzz," and and they don't realize the reason it does that is because what you said in the very beginning, the string rotates. Right. And if you're whacking on a guitar, it's going to buzz. That's just what it's going to do. Okay, so we talked a little bit about how to how to you know the the actual adjustment for your truss rod is an Allen wrench, you know, mm-hmm. and it, it it's easy. you don't even have to remember which way it goes. Turn it one way and look at your neck. It'll and if that's not the way you want it to go, turn, turn it the other way. That's that's my scientific uh, way about that. But well, let, let's take a look. We've got one more um, easy adjustment that can be made, and that is the strap button. Okay, sounds ridiculous right? (laughs) The strap button. But how many of us have got the guitar home, bought the strap, right? And then realized, well, I can, I can put the strap on the, the, uh, at the base of the guitar, you know, now here's a strap button right here, right? But the other end of the strap, it had some sort of uh, shoestring kind of deal there, right? And, and, um, I can't tell you how many times in a lesson, new guitar that i i could i could just if i had a nickel right <laughs> i knew the next lesson was going to be what am i supposed to do with this right so basically the the traditional wow. way was to put the uh put the leather the leather strap underneath no. the strings on the other side of your nut and that will hold the the end of the strap what i found with that is that that gets in the way of playing a lot uh, your strap comes from your shoulder straight out to the headstock of the guitar, and not not the best way to to, to deal deal with that. Um, so, my buddy Scott here, uh, I always notice that he he doesn't have a problem with that at all. Oh, who you got there? <laughs> That's Dollar. Oh, she's a Dollar. <laughs> <laughs> I have so, the same, the same one you have. Right. Let's let's talk about how this is the only time I will ever take a drill to an acoustic guitar and not worry about it. And basically, on the underside of the guitar, the, the side of the guitar that's towards the floor, on the heel of the neck, right here, you have a nice chunk of wood. It's pretty thick, and if you have a uh, you don't want to just screw this in there without having some sort of a pilot hole because you'll split the wood. You have to make sure you have a a good enough size drill bit for the screw that you're going to put in there. It doesn't it doesn't have to be a tight fit. It can be a very you know even fit on there. Um, and I can't tell you how many <clears throat> how many times I've taken the seen the worry on a student's face with their brand new guitar and me with a, a drill <laughs> doing that. But once it happens, you, you know, you never think about it again. I'm, I'm sure Scott hasn't been thinking about his strap button uh, for 20 years, probably. But uh, only when you get a new guitar. But I also, when I do that, because I do it in the same place that Lee's talking about, and I do drill a pilot hole. And the reason it's on that side is because when the strap uh, comes around this way, it's it's not going to come off while you're playing or accidentally slip off because a lot of people will put them right here. Mm-hmm. And you have a strap button here, it's really not good for the guitar to put it there, and it can slip off while you're playing if you're moving it around. Also, on the screw, right before I put it into the pilot hole, I take a slight, a small drop or just dip the end of the screw into super glue and then I put it in and then the, the screw doesn't back out through vibration and the strap 
bolting on the screw, it stays. And if you ever have to take that screw out, it'll come out very easily because super glue really doesn't have any tinsel strength, but uh, it won't let it vibrate out. And um, the hot glue too. I've used hot glue before. That that that'll even wood glue. You know, even some um, you know something yeah. something not you know doesn't have to be. And not a lot of it. Right, right. And that's and that's kind of like um, we'll, we'll we'll actually I'm getting ahead of myself. There's I want to talk about the we'll talk about nuts, the guitar nut. Um, and keeping that in place too. That's something we'll talk about. Okay, so we're going to take a break here and we're going to take a look at the chat and say hi to everybody. Uh, let's go back to the beginning and see who we've got. Kevin was first. Hit those thumbs up. Thank you. And, and thanks everybody for hitting the likes, thumbs up. That really helps us. We're going to be um, pushing this show pretty heavy in the near future. So uh, Jim is here from Australia. Hey, Jim, great to see you. David's here from uh, the uh, Super Bowl champions, the city of champions at this time. Uh, let's see. Kevin's here. Okay. We have everybody's. Dean's here. Hey, Dean, great to see you. Um, and we've got Evan as well. Um, let's see. Everybody, let's see. Kevin says minus 20 with a wind chill in Wisconsin. No, no, no way. That hurts. That hurts thinking about it. Oh, gosh. Um, and see, uh, Dean says cold and snowy in Maine, too. Yeah, you got, I'm sorry. I am really sorry. Well, unless you like that. I know some people love it. Love the snow. I'm not a, I'm not one of them. Uh, let's see here. And here we go. It's 70 degrees in New Orleans. That's right. There, there. Now we're starting to get it. Now we're starting to get it there. And then this is what I've got here, David, almost in 80 in Tampa today, right? Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, Kevin. Okay. Um, okay, so let's see here. Uh, Evan says Guitar Center charges $20. I overheard the other day, and I'm, th I'm guessing he's talking about changing strings for $20. Um, well, you know, who am I to... Uh, comment on how somebody does their what makes their decisions about what they do but i'd rather you learn how to change your strings yourself i may do a new video on that i think every year i should do a changing your strings youtube video they do pretty well um and evan says that's not worth it right um Okay, David says had to turn on the air conditioner on today. <laughs> those are big. Those are, those are tough problems. And then Coke says on the other side of things, my car battery keeps dying because it's too cold. Right? Okay. Oh goodness. <laughs> okay, so now we're getting to where we were talking about truss rods. Um, Emma says you're not careful with the truss rod. Um, sure, but you'd really have to crank it. Yeah, I mean as long as you as long as you. Um, if you get to a point where you're not sure what you're doing, stop. You know, um, if it doesn't easily turn one way or easily turn the other way, then then that's the time to get some some help or over loosen it, like Scooter says. Yeah, you got to keep those threads working. If once the threads are gone, it's done. It's done. Um, David says, "Are adjustments made by sight?" Uh, you yes. there's. A, Yes, they are. After a, after a, for me, uh, most of my adjustments I did using rulers and and those kind of things, and I did that for years until you start to know how you like a guitar to feel. It's a strange thing. So you you start to you can start to see by sight. I can see right here that these nut slots are perfect on this guitar, which shows you what a nerd I am. From a distance, I can tell whether that, you know. And um, why would the nut slot, hi oh, actually, I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, we're gonna yeah. move on into that. Uh, okay, so um, Evan says he found a fretboard ruler on Amazon for 20 bucks. Okay, let's see here. And Evan loves Scott's dog. <laughs> there's, a, there's a few of them. <laughs> we could be visited by a few more too, so. Uh, yeah. And let's see here. Jim says, I use feeler gauges from a local hardware shop to measure relief. Yeah, and that's a good way to do it too. 
and that's a um yeah you get the feeler gauges you you um make sure they stay oiled um the, the that's a, that's a with, with the with the feeler gauges from um you know the ones that are all kind of in a ring that you get from the hardware from the automotive store um they, they all have an oil to them um if you remove and i always was afraid of getting that whatever oil that was on my guitar uh, but the problem is if you remove the oil they rust right away so um yeah just you just have to keep a cloth with you on that um and evan says yeah twenty dollars to change strings that's that is interesting isn't it oh well you got to make your money somewhere right changing string i should go into changing strings business i'll charge fifteen dollars to change strings. <laughs> that to do it okay so let's get back let's let, let's move on from easy adjustments and we'll go to some more involved things um understanding action okay so when you have uh, a guitar and you play one and, and it feels great and then you play another one and, it, and it's tough to play the first thing you notice is how far away the strings are from the fretboard or the tops of the frets really doesn't matter the fretboard doesn't matter you're not playing the fretboard you're playing the tops of the frets and that's action okay that's the distance between the bottom of the string and the top of the fret why would why wouldn't we just be able to go online scott and type in uh what should how how high should my strings be and just have one number and everybody would be happy. There is a, an average one number, five thirty seconds or whatever, you know, but that's so crazy because everybody has a different touch, different gauges. And, and over time you will find, don't get too, uh, you know, don't get too disappointed if you can't find that because over time you're going to eat that bowl of porridge. That's just right. And you'll right. find it. Yeah, it's 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 all about how hard you play the strings and what gauge strings you use too. It's it's uh, it's a give and take, and it takes some time to figure out what works for you. When Scott went through all the different guitars he uses that have different gauge strings for different purposes, um, that's pretty far on down the road, you know. But do you remember that time when you finally found the sweet spot on your, you know, the first time on a guitar where you go, I'm getting it. You know, this is, they're not too low. They're not too high. Um, and what we want to do is on the next, we're gonna, the first thing that we get to when we are dealing with action on an acoustic guitar, the very first stop that you make is saddle height. Scott, tell me a little bit about saddle height and how that um, affects the action on the guitar. Well, at, at each end of the guitar, the nut and the saddle have a huge effect on, on where they sit on the action of the guitar. And generally the saddle, and this is very important, I, I maybe learned this a few years ago, uh, I never really checked it prior to this, but the saddle radius has to be the same as the neck radius. There's a, a, the radius of your neck and the radius of the saddle should be the same in order for everything to work uh, properly. And very little adjustment on the saddle height causes a lot of, a lot of difference on the neck. It, it really drastically will change the difference as well as the nut as well. Well, so the, the uh, electric guitar, the nut is, we're pretty much in the same boat as acoustic guitar with the nut. We have to, there's some, some physical things we have to do to that, to, to adjust it. But on an electric guitar, the bridge, we have all sorts of different adjustments. We can make that bridge play any different way we want to, as high or as low as we want to go. Um, but on the saddle, on an acoustic guitar, if you were, Scott, if you were going to want to lower your action from the saddle of your guitar, what was, what, how would you approach that 
with the um that's that's what i didn't i i started to hit on that i guess and and went somewhere else but i'm old and my brain is <laughs> it, the saddle has the same radius as the neck radius so you don't want to you don't want to say oh well i need to lower the saddle so get your file out and start filing the top of your saddle you don't want to do that you don't want to change that radius so you remove the saddle and what i have is a wood block and then I have a piece of glass that is on top of it. It's in a vise. Something that's perfectly and flat. Perfectly flat. Has to be perfectly flat. And on top of that glass, I have uh, adhesive-backed uh, sandpaper that I put and cut. And I have different grades of sandpaper and different blocks. And then I, uh, for a, a rougher grade, like an 18 grit, maybe to take a lot of of, of material off the saddle down to a finer grit. And then even though I trust that my block is flat, I'll take a straight edge uh, like the one Lee had there. Uh, but my, well, it has to be, you can't see light through it. So it has to be a, a, a good straight edge. And then I set the saddle on top of it and hold it up to the light to make sure there's no gaps or anything in that saddle. And, and that's how you remove material uh, to lower the saddle right so we're we're actually sanding the bottom of the saddle and removing material and so you probably know where that would head to is well how much material should you remove and that's the that's the first um, step into guitar repair <laughs> that happens for a lot of people. They try to, to lower that, lower the saddle so they can bring their strings down and you go too, too far. And then at that point, your strings are hitting, actually hitting your frets. Um, I've seen that several times or actually hitting the wood part of the saddle. I've seen that it's so low that they, they hit the front of the wood of the saddle. Uh, and then you would have to get a replacement uh, saddle. You have to buy a new one and start from scratch and lower that one down again. So you're right in the same boat right there. So, um, marking with a pencil, just a, a fine line at the very bottom of the saddle, removing that testing. It's, it's really until you're super familiar with it and you can kind of eyeball how much it is. Uh, it's a, it's a trying stuff over and over and over, you know, removing a little bit, putting it back in, testing it, you know, and, and that's another thing too. When you have to keep trying things, and you have to take the strings off and put them back on again. Another tip uh, for that is to use a piece of Velcro underneath, all right here behind the neck, and put the put the, the one piece of Velcro under the strings, the other one on top of them. Um, it holds all the strings in a line in place, so you can remove them from the uh, tuning pegs, and they don't get twisted and and go all over the place too. So, um, but you would have to, for the, for the saddle, you have to go back and forth, go back and forth, remove a tiny bit, check it, remove a tiny bit, check it and realize when you're getting close at that point, just stop. Don't go for that. I think one more, if I just one more trip with a sandpaper and it's, it's done. You're <laughs> it's, over. it's amazing. that one little bit too much because it's to use a shim, to get the, the saddle back up, you're, you're, you're not doing good. And it's very yeah. important to know, I'm going to try and see if I can get this, where the string comes out of the, the uh, bridge, where the sound pe pin, where the string mm -hmm. pin is, the more of an angle before it goes over the bridge, mm -hmm. like if it's that angle or if it's like this, that's not good. The more angle it has, the more down pressure it has on the saddle. And the more right. down pressure it has, the more vibration that the top will have because of the force of the string down on it. And that's where that's where an acoustic guitar the sound comes from. That's your sustain right. and your everything is in that in that down pressure on the saddle. Okay. So, and you know, that the, um, the Les Paul, um, the, uh, wraparound bridge, you know, so not the, 
not not the bridge part, but the part that holds the the strings in place. The tail. The tail. The tail. You see a lot of people, and they say Dwayne Allman tried it, and a lot of people try this out, where they'll, they'll string that piece backwards, have the, the run the string through the through it backward and wrap it around. So basically, they're low. They're not. They're making that angle um, shallower. It's not as such a steep angle right there and then they lose all sorts of sustain and doesn't sound great and it's tough to intonate and everything like that i've, I've tried that several times because you think oh this is it's gonna you're gonna get that Dwayne almond no it, it, to me it never worked i'm sure there's some people and i guess it would depend on the guitar too maybe if you you know i don't know but for for me i never had good results with that wrapping it around there um but then there's the um what is that? The junior that had the the one one piece bridge where that's the only way you could do wrap it around there too. So, uh, okay. So let's go to our next more involved nut slot height. Okay. Now, nut slot height was not something that I. It really was on my radar for a long time, and I had been getting into uh, setting up strats and and you know doing fret work and doing all those things, and then I all of a sudden realized that all my guitars in the open position were extremely hard to play, <laughs> and they didn't tune, they didn't sound great down there, and I would just keep lowering. This was years ago. I would keep lowering my my bridge, lowering the saddles in my bridge to try and get that action down. And even to the point where it was starting to fret out, it was still tough to play up by the saddle. And that's because my nut slot height was too high. Um, I was having to use extra strength to fret open position chords. And that extra strength pushing down, I was actually pushing them out of tune. Um, I wasn't able to have a light grip on them. So it was really, really... An eye opening. This is probably when I was in, I don't know, like nineteen twenty something like that. When I was really just starting to get that, I was like, "That's the key to me." It was that was one of those light bulb moments for me. It's like the key to making guitar play great, especially a strat, because you've got the long scale, and it's already a tough guitar to play. You know, it's it's a it's a tight uh, feel to it. Uh, when you get the the nut slots down. Uh, to where they're comfortable, but they still uh, aren't buzzing too bad, uh, is was me the last step where I could I knew I can make a guitar play well, play well, and then that that was that was it for me. And <clears throat> what I want to do, let's see here. So, what you should do if you were a luthier, are you a luthier? He's not a luthier. I'm kind of a uh, a half half ass luthier. Yeah, okay, right. Um, is you would use your feeler gauges, or you use they actually have um, a nut the, gauge. Yeah, the nut the gauges that and that with the down pressure and all those kind of things. Um, I I had those. I got to the point where I stopped using them. Um, I started doing the ping test. Do you know about the ping test, Scott? The the ping test no, is that I use the gauge. I use a little gauge. Right, I, I use the ping test where I, I'm going to fret my first finger at, at right behind the third fret, and go behind the behind my finger, and ping. And if there's enough clearance there that the, the you hear a note, uh, you haven't gone too low yet. And so all the way across these, I've done this guitar um, a few years ago. Um, I'm getting a clean note but it's still very close. And then at that point I start to press down and it's much less than a business card. So I kind of, I've eyeball it there. If you are behind, if you're playing right here behind the third fret and you can't get a ping note, your nut slots are too low. Uh, and then we'll have, a, we're going to talk about a little trick for, for fixing that. That's a, that's a more involved trick. If your nut slots are too low. Um, but the, uh, the the gauges work great. I've had a few of those. I broke one of them, so I went back to the ping test. Uh, but you, you can you start to be able to eyeball. Okay, I, I've got a little bit of play. How much of that can I do before it's 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 uh, too low? 
Uh, but what would happen? Basically, what we're doing when we um, when we get to those nut slots, if you find one that's too high, uh, we start to use these things. These are nut slot files that are have a curve in the gauge strings that you use. Uh, also important when you when you switch gauges of strings too. If you have a dramatic switch, you know, for, to if if you if your guitar set up for light strings and you go to very heavy strings, um, they're not going to sit in the in the slot. They're not the, the, they're not going to hit the bottom of the nut slot, uh, and that's when you'll get that. If you've ever been tuning your guitar and it goes ping, right? It it binds up in there. So uh, this is this is uh, for like tens. I think this is a nine or a ten, right? Very thin files, and these go up. This is more for like the 20s I think or something like for more for like a D string or or a G string but I have them for for each one these aren't the kind of things that I tried the DIY route for these as well and do you know what that is have you have you seen the you take guitar strings and glue them to popsicle sticks and go back and forth <laughs> right? so you wound strings back and forth and it's it's kind of like trying to start fire with with two sticks right it it takes forever and it doesn't work so so if you're gonna buy anything for setting up your guitars the nut slot files i would recommend um They're very good to have and also uh like you were saying if, if you don't have the right width if it's pinching the string uh, your intonation is counting on the bottom of that string leaving the edge of the nut to go to the leading edge of the saddle and mm -hmm. if not in there right then your intonation is going to be a little right. wonky also in, in order to make that happen a lot of people if they have too high a, their strings are too high in the nut they keep slotting it down and then the string sits way deep in the nut it may be at the right height but you've got nut above the string itself mm -hmm. and you don't want that you don't want your string to be in a valley uh right like E string, your big, your large top E string, it should be sitting in a nut, and you should see about half of that half string. Of yep. Yeah, I'm looking at this right now. I see about half of my low E string on this. Now, the higher strings sometimes it they they will sit kind of flush to the top. Right, in, right, on the, flush. On the, right, just flush to the top. But the lower wound strings, you're gonna they're gonna be. Uh, I'm I'm feeling right now the D, the A, and the in the E string or all about half of it um, is popping out over the top of there. Yeah. So removing the, the ex excess as well. It, if you have, if you've noticed that your, your nut slot heights are all equally too high, that's at some time where you might want to take the strings off the guitar, pop the nut out and do like you did the bridge, the, the, the saddle. Uh, and file the bottom of the nut down, so that way you still keep the right curvature of the nut. If you know, and and get them into the area where you can check them again, you know, when you're in the ballpark, and then check each individual <clears throat> nut slot from there. Okay, so let's see here. We're at 48 minutes. Let's go back to the chat for a moment, and then we'll go to the advanced stuff. Um, Let's see here. Dean says, Lee, what kind of a nut would you recommend? Um, well, let's see. What kind of different nuts? The, the bone uh, was what I, I had a, a Les Paul that had a bone. I have a brass. Um, and for Stratocasters, I have, had a, was it Delrin? Um, it was kind of like, yeah, I don't, it was a slipperier kind of thing. And then the Graph Tech. Uh, graph is that graph tech? What's the graphite graph tusk? Yeah, graph tech makes those, yeah. Tusk, yeah. Um, the card up here's my card, right. uh, brass. There's right, baloney. You can use, I've seen uh, all kinds of nut for an electric guitar. I always use the tusk stuff now. I just, I, I, I don't, um, fool with the other things just because it's, it's, uh, if I'm going to do it, it's easy to file down and it's slippery, you know, so if I'm bending a lot of strings that they don't get pinched up in there. Um, if I was, if I was going to be an acoustic player 
where my thing was big, loud, open strings, then I would take it to somebody to have a different type nut put on. Um, what kind of, what, what, what have you got on your guitars that you use now, Scott? I, I use bone, uh, and uh, I just prefer bone, but I think any, everybody has their, that's another one of those things that mm -hmm. it's not better than the other, it's what's right for you, period. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's see here. Um, let's see here. Evan says it's a worthwhile pursuit to learn how to set up your own guitars. Once you have more than one guitar, um, that second guitar, your, your expenses of maintenance, <laughs> guess what? They double, right? And then triple. And then, you know, so at some point you realize, you know, 45 minutes, in, in the time it would take to drive to the guitar shop to have them do this, I could sit here on buy a book or, or get on YouTube and and learn how to do some of these things. And, and you can start small. You know, it I, starts with strings. Everyone <laughs> should be putting on their own strings. It gives you time to look at your guitar and see different things that you don't know anything about that question, they become questions, you become uh, the one that wants the answers and that's what leads to the next thing to the right. next thing and then your next thing you know uh guitar guitar center putting strings on for twenty dollars i mean yeah i don't i can't use the language it's the gateway drug well it's the yeah. first step yeah change your strings and well, the next when, I, <laughs> when i was in the store uh, I used to have a, a music store. Actually, Lee used to, to give instructions there. He had, a, he had his little area there. And when I did all the guitar work, the, the, the simple guitar work, when people would come in, I made them sit there. I had benches on the other side, and they had to watch me. And I tried to entertain them, but I tried to teach them because I didn't want to. I love to change strings. To me, it's like therapy. And I'll change strings all day. And we never charged a penny to change any. Mm -hmm. If you bought strings in our store, we changed them in our store. Yeah. But I try to educate everyone to make them uh, change their own strings. Well, they should be listening to you, but they're not. <laughs> they have their the, the the GC. They have their own uh, way they do things. So um, yeah. let's see. <laughs> David says. I did successfully change the strings on my Ibanez with that Floyd Rose. Man, that's good. I remember struggling with that the first time. I, I even had I had a, a Kaler um, a, a vibrato bar at one point, and that was that was a mess too. So those are no, are no fun. Um, let's see. Kevin says use a tusk nut. Um, I put a tusk on my tail. Yeah, they, it's it's easy, and they they sound pretty good. They sound, you know, they're not, they're not fantastic, but they get, they get the job done. Uh, Evan says preach scooter. <laughs> uh, and let's see. Um, and, uh, let's see here. We used to change strings for free when I worked at the music store. If you bought them from us. Yeah, that's how we used to do it. It would, you know, what do you, what are you going to do now? Um, Jim says you become more one with your guitar, right? Absolutely. That's the, that's what we're trying to do here. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and, and we've got one more little section. We're coming up uh, towards the end here. We just want to talk about some of the things that are a little bit more advanced that you may want to get some help with. These are the things that are that um, if you are going to spend some money, put some money into your guitar, th this is probably the way to go. Uh, installing pickups on an acoustic guitar is not the easiest thing in the world. There's some drilling involved. There's some adhesives and, and experimenting with <laughs> experimental adhesive. And you know, the, um, what is this one I have here? What is the? That's a Fishman, I believe. The Fishman with the, with the, um, the under the Infinity. saddle, the Infinity, right? So that was another one where I tried every adhesive that you could get to before going to, um, you know, stopping short of 
contact cement, you know, stopping short of, of this super strong stuff. And the only one that I found for me that state that, that glued to the inside of the guitar, kept the pickup controls on was, um, hot glue. I talked about earlier, hot glue kept it on whether it'll come off. I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea, but it's the only one that made it through a night of music without it falling and smashing and making big stuff. But a slight tip for those who are are going to put on their own pickup with that control in the sound hole, if you will super clean that area mm -hmm. with alcohol, let it dry. It could be overnight. And then take some clear nail polish and polish oh, that there. inside area and seal that wood. It will stay on. It will stay on. Yep. That's a good, that's a good tip. Thank you for that. That's awesome. Um, and so there's, uh, for the under saddle pickup, you know, there's a, a wire that has to come through there. So you have to, th there's some drilling involved. Um, there's sanding of your, of the bottom of your saddle, uh, to leave room for that, for that pickup. Cause, cause the pick, pickup sits where your saddle is underneath it. Um, so now it's taking up some of that space. There's adjustments there. There's the uh, battery compartments. There's the pin where the jack goes in, in, in the back of the guitar. And, um, people can do that really well and they earn their money when they do it. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I've done it. I've done it. I've done it a few times. I probably would. I probably still wouldn't pay somebody to do it, but it's it's. I'd have to make sure I had an afternoon free, a whole afternoon, you know. Um, well, I, and I, I'm not a luthier, and I do a lot of guitar work that luthiers would call simple stuff. And it's there's nothing wrong with finding a real good luthier. Mm -hmm. You'll learn. You will learn encyclopedias from them and they're not afraid to tell you and teach you but uh i mean i i, I put in probably i, I pick up site that's what i do i mean i probably put in 500 pickups i don't know but uh, uh when it gets to that hairy stuff that makes you want to back up and think about it it's go to a luthier and speaking <laughs> of that a neck reset Okay, so this is the this is the thing that this is we're, we're into some scary territory. We're into Luthierville right here. This is some scary stuff. So this is when your neck has has moved so far that regular truss rod adjustments aren't going to fix what need to be fixed. Um, so Scott, tell me a little bit about neck resets. Well, that's a, that's a whole process, and there's special equipment, these heaters that fit on the top, uh, on, on the upper bout and neck area of the guitar that heat this saddle, this old type hide glue, and uh, allow the neck to be pulled and, and removed. And, I, I mean, I don't know how many of you out there love to, like, I... I absolutely like to watch a carpenter or anybody that's a really skilled laborer do what they do, whether he's an auto mechanic or whatever. Mm -hmm. You go to a luthier for a guitar player, for a, a player to take his guitar to a luthier and be able to watch him a little bit. It's like going to Disneyland. It's unbelievable. Right. And, and mm -hmm. it opens things up and, and they move through it. They make it look easy. It's not. I mean, it requires time and learning and knowledge, but mm -hmm. it's like a ballet. It's it's incredible. And a neck reset, if it comes to that, uh, you, you don't want to try this on your own with a heating pad. <laughs> right. Yeah. So there's some heating. There's some there, there's some high temperatures involved. There's glue involved, and um, there's removal of wood to get the angle. So basically the angle isn't the angle from your bridge to your, your fretboard straight across. You're not, it, it's not lining up. So you have to remove wood from the body of the guitar where the neck sits to readjust the angle. So it's in a good playing position. Um, yeah. And it's very involved. And the, and the last thing was fret work too. Now I do my own fret work, um, but it was, uh, I like, like, uh, like David, I had 
some guitars that didn't matter to me if I messed them up, you know, that, that I experimented with. And it took a long time, but I'm, I'm there now where I can make a guitar do what I want it to do, you know, make the fret work. You know. But it's expensive uh, to get the tools, and um, it's, it's easy to mess up. And, um, and there's a lot to learn about fret work too. So, uh, I, <clears throat> have you ever gotten into fret works, uh, Scott? I level, I, I do my own leveling and, and edging, uh, but I don't refret. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I let somebody that really can do this blindfolded, do it. I watch, I learn, I think I could do it, but to me, I'd rather go to Disneyland and get on the ride. That's right. That's right. So, so there's our three advanced, uh, advanced things, and we are right at the hour. So I, I, we blew right past the hour. That's that's awesome. I knew that would happen. I knew that would happen. So also, I wanted to shoot in. I know you said you had somebody from Australia there, and uh, you know, there's something in the water in Australia with guitar players. They they just they pump out these amazing genius guitar players. But speaking of which. I'm uh, good friends with Jeff Atchison down in Australia, and I'm going to see if I can hook him up with Lee. Oh, who, uh, yes. Uh, asked in the future because he's like off the chart uh, stuff. That I'm looking forward to. That would be that would be a lot, a lot, a lot of fun. Well, okay. So we've done it. We've gone through all of the different adjustments that we can make to a guitar. We've put them in order of what we could do ourselves, what we could spend a little bit of time learning, and what is very advanced that may, may or may not be what you want to um, pay for, pay someone who knows what they're doing to do. Uh, and I hope you learned a little bit. I learned some stuff, and uh, I enjoyed uh, spending the time with Scott and spending the time with everybody in the chat. And so what we're going to do... Oh, and also remember, uh, head on over to... Uh, playguitaracademy.com forward slash chord guide. If you're playing acoustic guitar and you're having a hard time uh, making your chords come out clean, um, I've got some free stuff for you that's going to help you learn to develop your skills and bypass all of these common problems. It, it doesn't feel like it's common when you can't get those chords to play right. You always think it's yourself. It happens to everybody. There's small adjustments, and we uh, go through every single thing that you can do to move your fingers in the right place to make sure those chords come out clean every time. That's at playguitaracademy.com forward slash chord guide. And I'm going to say thanks to Scott, and I'm going to let him say it. That's a wrap. Go ahead. Hey, that's a wrap. I hope to see you next month. Be good. Make the music count. Thanks for joining us today for the Play Guitar Podcast. Make sure to hit the button below to subscribe to the show. And if you're watching on YouTube, hit the notification bell so you can get all of our content as soon as it comes out. For more episodes, lessons, and ways to get involved with the Play Guitar community, visit PlayGuitarPodcast.com. Thanks again, and we will see you on the next episode. And thanks, everybody, for hanging out in the chat. Uh, I've got to run. Uh, I will see you next week. And everybody saying thanks, Scott. Thanks, Scott. It's great to see you, man. It's great to see you. Um, you. And uh, and is that Riley? Oh, and there's Riley. That's right. <laughs> okay, everybody. We'll we'll see. I'll see you next week, and Scott will be back. Oh, there's Riley. Oh, there he is. Oh, goodness. And there he goes. Awesome. <laughs> Okay, Scott, hold on a second there. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next week.